welcome everyone to our final episode of our series, Biblical Treasure. In this series, we've been discussing the characters in the Bible that have inspired us in our walk with Jesus and to learn more about God. If you have missed the episodes, the previous episodes, please go to uh, the YouTube channel for St. Margaret's Church and you'll catch up, you can catch up with the episodes there. We will also be circulating an email with the link to the channel so that you can uh, watch the other series that we've had before. Today I'm here with Lucy, so thank you Lucy for coming. And I know that most people in our church know who you are, Lucy, but mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your family and your connection to St. Margaret? And also, when you're not in Angering, what do you get out of mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, I'm Lucy. Uh, my dad is Mark the Vicar. Um, and I'm I was born in Angering. I've been here all my life, but um, I go to uni in Norwich and I'm a second year physio student at UEA going into third year in September. Fantastic. That was the S gone quick. <laughs> yeah, so quick. Yeah. So tell us, Lucy, what is your favorite memory of your childhood? Oh, it's such a hard question. I, I think I have so many lovely memories from, we had lots of holidays um, in South of France when I was younger and um, we had a pool and it was just so fun and William and I were just splashing around. It was a lovely um, time to have a holiday with the family. I think just all of those holidays. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds lovely. I've never been to France, so <laughs> one day. What character, Lucy, have you chosen to talk to us about today that has inspired you in your journey of faith? And why have you chosen this particular character? Well, I've chosen Daniel. Um, and I've chosen, it's quite hard to narrow down one thing to talk about that really inspires me. Um, but just having a look through the book and thinking about Daniel's character this week, I've been really drawn to how faithful he is throughout this book. And how time and time and again, he wholeheartedly commits himself and the situations to God. And he chooses to trust and pray and give it all over to him. And that's despite many different types of oppositions. We see right from the beginning how he is exiled and how he then chooses to live in a godly way in a foreign land um, under quite a lot of pressure from a society that is not favorable to worshipping the, the Lord. And we see throughout Daniel, he's faced so many trials up until death threats and threats on his life for worshipping God. And I just really admired throughout all of that how he just completely commits himself to God time and time and again. And I think it's easy to say, but actually when going through a difficult time, it's very easy to rely on yourself and trust in yourself to get yourself through. But when we read the story, we see that it's, that's not what Daniel does. And he chooses to follow God's way time and time again and trusts in his amazing provision and waits expectantly and I think that's because he realizes who God is he knows who what his character is like and in the first chapter of Daniel from verse 20 there's a little section that just really sums up he really knows who he's talking to when he prays I'll just read a bit of it and it says praise be to the name of God forever and ever wisdom and power are his he changes times and seasons he disposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise, knowledge to the discerning, and he reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells within him. And I think he just acknowledges that every good and perfect thing is from God. And it is God who is in control and who is sovereign and who is creator. And from that knowledge of who God is and his relationship with God, we can see throughout this Book, that there's a clear pattern of Daniel continually humbling himself and submitting to God and choosing to make decisions that honour him in many different situations and each time he is met by God's unfailing faithfulness as well so when Daniel and his friends humble themselves each time God is God meets them where they're at and he provides for them and blesses them and I think there's this really amazing few verses in chapter 3 verse 17 where Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego are threatened with the furnace for worshipping God. And this, starting from 17, it says, 
If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. And I just love that assurance that actually God has the final say and he promises to be with us and be in complete control. And I love that even if, you know, we know he is so able to deliver us from things he has the complete ability to. But actually, even if the result isn't what I would like it to be, or even if I can't see how this is all going to be made together for my good, even then, he is still so faithful. And these men have such trust that actually, ultimately, God is in control. And I find that so reassuring um, that God is just so unchanging. And also, I just was thinking that what an amazing example that these men, um, Daniel included, are setting to those around them, that actually they're not being faced with easy trials. They are you know, life is on the line sort of situations. And they are just choosing to fully depend on God and just be like, okay, I, I'm going to still commit to God. I'm still praying to him. I'm still going to give him this. And, and it's noticed. And that's what's an amazing example to evangelize in really horrible situations that actually God is still working. God is still knitting situations for good and using these men to further his kingdom through it. Um, and I think also reading Daniel, it does point us towards Jesus and it does point us towards the cross that actually God um, being Jesus being the ultimate picture of humility, um, but also being our ultimate savior and refuge. And we can not only look towards the cross and be reminded that not only are we saved, but actually we're promised to be transformed by the Holy Spirit daily and being renewed and restored to be more like Christ each day. And what an amazing reassurance that is as well. And I just think so from mulling over Daniel this week, I just think it's such an encouragement to stand firm that actually, even though we sometimes can't see how it's working for our good, and that can be really frustrating, that actually we have amazing assurance to hold on to the promises, know who God is, and then just wait expectantly that God will always meet us because he promises to do so. Um, that's probably, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I love that. Daniel is also one of my favorite characters in, in the Old Testament. And I, 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 I find it fascinating that he stood firm in so many trials. And like you say, you know, knowing, trusting the promises of God in all situations, knowing that he is the sovereign and he is in control. And even if, I love mm. that, even if God doesn't do what we want, they still chose to trust in him and Daniel chose to trust in him in every situation. It is quite an encouraging book. So if you're not familiar with Daniel, maybe this week you want to uh, have a read of at least the first few chapters of Daniel and, and familiarise yourself with the stories. So thank you very much, Lucy, for bringing this wonderful treasure to us mm -hmm. today. And thank you, everybody at home that have been watching. And we look forward to meeting in person very soon and perhaps carrying on with our series, but in person. So bye-bye mm -hmm. for now. Thank you again, uh, Lucy, and God bless everyone. Bye. Thank you.